So welcome to Founders Week YQG. This event is all about bringing together entrepreneurs, startups, innovators, change makers, entrepreneurial support organizations, local leaders, and community. Our goal is to celebrate, educate, connect, and build momentum and opportunity around our region's startup community. This week would not have been made possible without our generous sponsors. We'd like to thank the St. Clair College Alumni Association, the Job Shop, Workforce Windsor-Essex, Baker Tilly, Alpha Core, Ventruit, Epicenter, Small Business and Art Entrepreneurship Center, St. Clair Genesis, and WeTech Alliance. Thank you for putting our hashtag founders first. For more information about our sponsors, please check out wetechalliance.com slash foundersweek. Today's session is hosted by Epicenter. The University of Windsor Epicenter is the entrepreneurial hub on the University of Windsor campus. New to business? Have an existing business? Looking for mentorship? No matter the stage of your entrepreneurial journey, we can help. We invite students and recent graduates of all disciplines to explore entrepreneurial thinking and culture through our free workshops, monthly events, and more. Visit our website today to learn how you can get involved. Now to the housekeeping items. To be considerate and accommodate everyone attending today, we are doing things a bit differently by meeting up by leveraging Zoom. You might not be able to see all the attendees, but you will have ample opportunity to engage with our guests during the Q&A session. Feel free to use the chat feature located at the bottom of the video window to engage with session attendees. Should you experience any technical difficulties, please send us a message in the chat box. This session will be recorded. A video file, audio file, and relevant links will be available on WeTech Alliance's YouTube channel and included in the attended follow attendee follow-up email. We are also streaming the session live on the WeTech Alliance Facebook page. Finally, let's make sure everyone knows Founders Week YQG is where it's at. Be sure to share your hashtag Founders Week YQG experience on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Now I'd like to welcome our moderator, Harley Gillis, onto the stage. On behalf of the Founders Week YQG team, thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks, Leanne, for the introduction. So excited to be here with Pina from Windsor Eats. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Harley. I'm the founder of the Windsor Essex Food Film Festival and the blogger behind Screen to Table, a blog all dedicated to food and film. Uh, so to get into it, I'm going to introduce Pina, who is the co-founder of Windsor Eats, and the co-creator of the Craft Beer Festival, um, a leading culinary tourism event and experience developer here in Windsor and Essex County. She specializes in the marketing of culinary and tourism establishments, including coaching tourism operators in the development of experimental, experiential tourism products. Um, so let's get started with a couple rapid fire questions. Um, so Pina, mm. what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Uh, the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. So, um, and this has been through a number of people, always listen to your instincts. I've been told this over and over again, and it's something that now I kind of tell other people about. Um, you know you, and you know what your comfort levels are, you know what's right and wrong. And in terms of like when we're planning events like that, I always look inward. If I know, if I feel like something isn't right, it's probably not right. If I feel like I need to deal something with something in a certain way, again, I know how to how to deal with that based on how I'm feeling and how I think that thing should go. So I'm, I always tell others like, you know, you listen to what your inner self is telling you. It's usually right. Yeah, no, definitely trust your gut. Such good advice. Um, so what's one thing you wouldn't be able to live without? Uh, currently, um, <laughs> I, don't know, I was thinking about this. Um, Travel. I can't live without travel. I love traveling and uh, the past 20 ones has been just like gut wrenching for me because I haven't been able to uh, get outside these borders. Um, we have been taking road trip trips here and there and that's kind of helped satiating that need to get out. Uh, but I miss going, um, getting on a plane and just checking out other cities for, for like over 20 years. I travel to Italy every summer. So not being able to do that the last two summers has been, has been challenging for me. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, where's your favorite place that you've ever been? Um, oh, there's a, set, a, a part of Italy that um, it, it doesn't, a lot of people don't tend to go there. It's in the north. It's called Courmayeur and okay. it's within the Alps and it's stunning. It's just 
this out of the way kind of place. It's on the border with France and it's just beautiful. Oh no, that sounds amazing. All right, um, then I guess we can move on to the next question. Um, who's a successful entrepreneur that you look up to? I'm gonna say um, Samantha Wa uh, Walker at Art Lab. She is amazing. I yeah, idolize good. her. Yeah, she is just nailing it with everything that she does. And if I, I loved her when she first opened up, partly because she provided uh, a creative outlet for my kid. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. But then as I got to know her and got to know Art Lab, it's just that love of that uh, business has grown. And even more so uh, during the pandemic, she, I have pivot envy with her because she just did an amazing job to keep her business going and then just turned into this amazing establishment for kids. She just, it's, it's a space of pure joy when you yeah. walk in there and it's amazing. My kid loves it. I love it. Um, I think a lot of people do. Uh, and she's just done an amazing job. Yeah. She does like such cool stuff, making art yeah. so accessible to everybody. Yeah. And she went from doing just like basic kids art classes and then she introduced date nights. And then during the pandemic, she started a subscription box and now she has like these amazing, uh, classes and, and workshops, um, for adults and kids. It's just, I just love her. Yeah, no, that great one. And local too, so even better. Yeah, local. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get into our like actual discussion um, and jump into it. Um, so tell us about yourself and Windsor Eats. Uh, okay, so um, I'm a, so like my education background is I, I went to St. Clair College for like journalism and then went to the University of Windsor for communications. And that kind of led, uh, me onto a path where I started working for the city and planning events for them and helping them coordinate events um, through Parks and Rec. And I'm still at the city. I'm doing different things for the city now, but that kind of led me on my event path. Um, and then 18 years ago, uh, Windsor Eats was born. Um, and that was the brainchild of Adriano, um, who was looking for, he graduated St. Clair College and was looking for for uh, a job, but decided kind of to start his entrepreneurial path. So together we kind of built that along the way. It started out as a, a culinary guide or it more, not even a culinary guide, like a menu guide. It was a, a menu guide where we listed restaurants and like, you have to think like 18 years ago, um, there was no Yelp, there was no, uh, you know, you couldn't just look up menus. Um, we didn't really have that. So this was, um, the solution to that where people kept asking, you know, I want to go to a restaurant, but I don't know what they have on their menu and Windsor Eats was born. Uh, it kind of evolved from that. Um, and it, and it evolved specifically in 2008 when we added cycling tours to, to Windsor Eats, um, that kind of shifted our direction into offering tours and experiences through through the business and it kind of grew from there. Then we started adding events. Um, then in 2013, there was um, the craft beer movement was kind of starting to take shape. I say starting to take shape. There was one brewery here. We yeah. had one real brewery in 2013, but in the rest of the province and then specifically in um, Michigan, the craft beer movement was gaining momentum. It was it was a, it was huge. So yeah, we knew that eventually at some point that was going to filter down to Windsor. Windsor tends to be a little bit behind in terms of trends. So yeah. we kind of knew that eventually um, the craft beer movement was going to get here. And, and Walkerville was kind of leading that way. Motorcraft Ales was on the cusp of opening, um, but hadn't been there yet. It had, just wasn't quite there yet. So we decided to host a craft beer festival. <laughs> with one brewery. We actually had, I think we had um, maybe like 11, 11 breweries, 12 breweries that yeah. came in from across Ontario, um, which at the time was quite the feat because Windsor was not known for craft beer. Yeah, We were an OV town, Labatt's kind of thing. Uh, so it took a lot of um, kind of negotiating and telling them how great Windsor was that they needed to come down here and we did get, end up getting uh, 11 breweries to come down uh, to support the first craft beer festival. And then it kind of grew from there. Um, and since then, we've been trying to create new festivals um, to kind of highlight 
we're so lucky here. You know, we, we have so many great assets here in terms of food and drink. Um, I mean, whiskey, we all know about whiskey, the wine, now beer. It's just, we're awesome. And it's like, it's like easy pickings to kind of pull from uh, to create these great experiences. So we just, that's what we've been doing. We've been developing experiences, whether, whether they're through events and festivals or tours and just kind of building on that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So obviously you guys couldn't do a lot of the things you wanted to do in 2020. How have you guys pivoted in the pandemic? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been a shit show over the last 20 months. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's been probably the most challenging time as a business. I'm not for sure, not just for me, but for everybody. Um, but I think the, I think one of the, the positives coming out of that is that there's a lot of learning that happened. Um, and we created new things that we're going to take with us moving forward. But when, when this whole thing went down, we had been watching it um, since December, January, because it, things were trickling through media saying something was going on. And, and, and we have family in Italy, so um, they my, un it. my uncles kept saying stuff is getting weird here. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of we were kind of keeping an eye on what was happening within the tourism and hospitality industry uh, in Europe and Italy and knew that had if, if if and when it hit here it wasn't going to be good and it wasn't going to be short term it was going to be long term we were estimating two to three years so we were kind of quickly trying to come up with a formula or a plan that would get us through two to three years where things were were uh in a chaotic state yeah, um yeah. so as soon as it hit we started kind of um we did some training seminars for not only for ourselves, but we offered them to other people to help with uh, navigate like the financial um, and accounting things that, that were happening, um, yeah. trying to get inform marketing information for restaurants, how to keep going um, in a time of, of turmoil. Um, we did things like free karaoke on Friday nights where we did online, <laughs> online karaoke to kind of bring some positivity to people as we were all locked in our homes. Yeah. Um, and then in April, we, uh, we launched Bevy Box, which was um, the first kind of uh, delivery service with alcohol uh, within, within the region. Actually, we worked with the AGCO on that to help with licensing and, and maybe and, and change the licensing so that we were able to do that. Um, and, that's, and we're still doing that. Um, and that has been one of the things that has given us a pulse yeah. in a time where we can't gather and we can't um, we can't come together the way we, we used to. Um, and then food hall, we, we implemented food hall in the fall of 2020. We had approval from city mayor and council, um, in April, May of 2020 to, to implement the food hall, um, which we then was very successful and helped a number of businesses, uh, like ours survive were businesses that relied on festivals and events um, who didn't have a patio space uh, but needed something to keep going and the food hall was kind of an incubator or an, or a forum where they were were able to do that and um, I'm very proud of that we created a great system it kind of it took some time to kind of uh, work out the kinks of the system as anything right like there's always and I try not to like worry about that too much because I know eventually it all works out but we implemented this great system uh, contactless system where people ordered on their phones um, they had the option of dining in or um, we also had a takeout option which worked out really well so two two uh, years of that uh, mm -hmm. it ended last month and I, I'm gonna tell you that it was like the happiest day that last day was the happiest day <laughs> I love the food hall and for I love everything that it did, but two years of that takes a mental toll and you just kind of long for the normalcy of an of a normal event um, where you're not checking passports and you're not you can't you know be near someone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Looking towards the future, what are you guys like thinking for 2022, 2023? <sighs> So we're, we're, we're hoping that um, things go back to some type of normalcy. I know that, you know, it, I, and I, I think it's great that restaurants um, are able to like have dine-in. I think it's amazing. Um, events, 
I think it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, my hope is that we'll see the return of by October, the return of Beer Fest. I mean, if Beer Fest doesn't come back in October 2022, we're, we've got bigger problems. But I'm hoping that October 22, at least Beer Fest happens. Okay. What that, what that looks like, though, I don't know. Um, yeah. And obviously, we have to work around whatever restrictions, uh, restrictions are in place at the time. Tours, uh, we're hoping to start those back up again. Um, we've, we're having conversations about Friday Night Lights happening again. Um, because that was really popular during the summer months, and just slowly bringing back things. Uh, just as the, the week that the shutdown happened, just like the week before, we yep. were actually in talks of um, securing a space for Windsor Eats, because our ultimate goal has always been to have brick and mortar and to have a place where we can amalgamate all our um, events and ha have a space to call our own. Obviously that didn't happen. Um, but we're hoping now that things are sort of returning to normalcy that we get back on that train because ultimately we do want some place where Windsor Eats has a space and where we can kind of launch all our activities from. No, that's super exciting. Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, so when we were talking, you know, setting up the session, we wanted to talk about a little bit about failure. So let's kind of dive into that. Is there any kind of like failure you want to highlight or talk about? Uh, yeah, I, I love this idea that WeTech is having this failure night because I'm always intrigued about, you know, because here's the thing, like, we all know this as business owners, you, you, it's not like success all day long, like everything you do is a success. To get to that success, there's like a hundred failures behind you. And, and it's not even that, I don't like calling them failures, but I, I see them more as learning opportunities or things that it's a great idea, but just needs a little bit of tweaking or it needs improving upon or maybe like a shift here or there. Yeah. Um, but I honestly believe like those are, those things are the things you learn from the most. Um, and, and we've learned, and like I've had a lot of them. So it's like, um, I just, one of the things that comes to mind, we used to have a, a sausage fest at Robbie's with at Robbie Gourmet Sausages, and it was yeah. just in his little lot. And we used to get like 500 people that would come to that. Um, and we thought, oh, you know what? This should be like a big festival. Um, so we, we got a space. We started formulating that, but there was, we just couldn't get it off the ground. We, we learned from, from trying to implement that idea that um, you, you have to wait for the the perfect time and you have to have the data and the stats to back you up in order to implement an event that big it wasn't the time for that specific festival but yeah. that situation helped us for future festivals um so we knew that if we had an idea for an event we needed to kind of weigh in um the pros and cons of it and and understand is it a small, do we need to start this off as a small event or does it have um, the, the data and the stats behind it to make it something bigger right off the hop? We also, the other mistake we made was when we did, um, we did Urban Wine Fest a couple years back and we had an initial idea of what that wine festival was gonna be like then, <laughs> but it wasn't, again, you're, this is where you have to listen to your inner voice something wasn't sitting well with it i it was the whether it was the format there was something that just wasn't right about it um and it kind of it, it was for both adriana and i we were kind of uneasy about it then a week before you have a moment where you're like i know what it is we changed the entire format format of the event mind you that came at a significant cost to us yeah. because you can't when you change a format of a festival one week prior to that festival there's a lot of ramifications that uh, that happen as a result. So we we learned again trust your instincts. <laughs> yeah. um, but the positive to that is we came up with a formula for future events that we did use uh, in future events in terms of how the layout and how the setup uh, of an of that specific event was going to go. So if we were ever to do it again in the future, we now know that there, there is a specific formula, formula for that event that we're going to carry forward um, and that we're going to utilize. I know for sure. So yeah, kind of on that topic, going past those events, what advice do you have for other entrepreneurs that are taking, having those learning moments, having those failures? 
So like I said, I'm, I, I try not to, like, don't be afraid to make the mistakes because they're your biggest teachers um, and you can't succeed without making a few of them along the way. Um, they show you uh, what's possible and how to improve. And like I said, we, I make them all the time. It's nothing, it's not like uh, everything that Windsor Eats does is a huge success. Um, yeah. No, <laughs> no, we have, there's like an ebb and flow to it, right? Like, but you have to do your research and you have to kind of uh, look into your stats and your data and, and kind of determine, and, and again, listen to yourself because you know you um, on whether or not it's a good idea for you. Um, and, and the other thing is, is like, make sure you have a strong support system because the entrepreneurial journey is just, like I said, it's full of ebbs and flows and things don't always go as planned um, for most of the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it just, it always helps to have someone in your corner that can, that you can kind of unload on uh, who will listen and just offer trusted advice when you need it. So having positive, supportive people around you, cheerle cheerleaders, um, those who believe in your abilities uh, goes a long way. It, and just and to ignore like the chatterings of naysayers and just rise, rise above those murmurings. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, beyond having that support system, what keeps you going through it all? Like what drives you to continue Windsor Eats? <sighs> um, I, I think it's a little bit of stubbornness uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and determination um, for sure. Um, the, the, the drive to constantly keep creating new things. Uh, I love seeing something being birthed into, uh, for example, like taking a, an idea like the beer fest and then birthing it into an actual event and, and seeing the culmination of all the hard work that goes into that. Um, I, I just, I love seeing that process. Um, the other thing that kind of drives me is, is uh, my, my daughter, she, she kind of, she just, she watches your every move, right? So I need to have her see that her mama is in a position uh, where she's making decisions and, and is able to deal things when things might not go her way. I, I need her to understand that as a female, that she can go out and, and have a non-traditional job and make decisions and be, be oftentimes the only female in the room um, who's making those decisions. Uh, because in, in examples like, like Windsor Craft, Craft Beer Festival, it's myself and three partners who are male. Yeah. So when we're setting up, I'm oftentimes the only female on site. Um, so you're, you're making decisions. And, and oftentimes uh, I bring her to events so that she sees that, or my husband brings her out on site to see uh, that it's not like a nine to five job, right? It's like the, the construct of the idea of a job is different for everybody. And, and you can also create those, those, those uh, parameters and create your own job. And that she doesn't have to be confined to, to something stationary, like sitting at a desk or, or whatever. She, she can do what she needs to do if she's happy with it. No, oh, that's super like inspiring. Um, yeah, so kind of on that, you know, talking to people who are going out there chasing that job, what advice would you give them to starting a business or start building their own startup here? Start now. <laughs> don't, don't wait, don't hum in and, you know, start now because there, there's a theory that's called the 1% infinity theory um, that you kind of have to, you take an idea and you build on it day by day by day. Um, there's an incredible amount of work involved in building a business, as we all know. Um, but one of the hardest things is that you need to be consistent at doing that. So, you know, you have to constantly, constantly be working at, you know, you're publishing a post, you're sending out newsletters, you're responding to emails, uh, doing your social media, uh, constantly creating um, is so vital and important to success. Um, but when we don't improve, then we're applying the concept of 0% infinity. Um, so improving something, 0% means you, it doesn't improve. You're doing, you're doing nothing. But if you find a way to improve just a little bit each day, 1%, uh, and continue doing that consistent work, then five years down the road, you're going to look back at where you started and be really impressed at the progress that you made. And that's, and that's the idea of the 1% infinity. So you improve a little bit every day forever. <laughs> um, 
and you look back and look at the great progress that you've made. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. Get started. If you've got something, go after it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Here in Windsor, what do you think, you know, are the benefits of to starting a business here? Um, I think when I think about, you know, why Windsor Essex, I know a lot of people, I, I, I hear the word like world-class that gets thrown around a long time. We're always trying to improve for um, other people that don't live here. We, and, and, there, and by all, we do have to attract talent from outside the area. But I think one of our benefits is, is that we're small. We're a small community. Windsor Essex is a small community. Um, and there's benefits to that. Um, we all know each other. It's, it's really hard to like walk down the street and not connect with someone that you know or go to an event and not see people that you know. Um, and instead of seeing that as a negative, we should really see it as a positive because we can build an amazing community uh, based on the fact that we all know each other. We're all trying to strive towards the same goal, which is to build our businesses, to make a better community um, and, and, and build off that. Um, I believe that creating a great city requires great small businesses, great people who live in it. Um, the world-class part comes later, right? So I think that everything needs, always needs to start at grass, grassroots. I'm always looking at grassroots kind of initiatives because I think we need to build the city that we want to live in as residents. Um, and then the rest kind of follows. Um, but if we create a, a city that's great for ourselves, for our kids to live in, um, then people see that, they catch that vibe, and then they're just naturally attracted to that. You look at cities like Austin or Portland, those don't happen overnight. Those, yeah. those, are, those are ideas and, and um, you know, bylaws or whatever that are implemented, like Portland, implemented specific zoning and bylaws in the 70s that helped create the Portland that we know today. So, yes. but they but they did it to help their existing businesses, their existing residents. Um, it wasn't done for people who don't live here. It was done for the people that live, that live there. So I feel like sometimes we just need to like refocus and just let's think about what kind of city we want to live in and let's build on that. And let's build the city that we want to live in and that our kids want to live in. Oh, for sure. That definitely makes a lot of sense. And I mean, Windsor is great for that. We're so small. We're not like New York, right? where you're looking for like a little pocket of something. Yeah, and there's like, there's room for everybody here, right? Like if, if you have an idea, if I have an idea and those ideas are kind of somewhere the same, it's great because we can still help each other out, right? Like it's, there's room for everybody here. I, I say it's small, but not so small that we can't all have like, you know, multiple events and festivals and, and things like that. Yeah. The more people do just, it's the more for people to come out and experience. There's just more mm -hmm. options. Um, no, that's definitely exciting. Um, kind of on that note and bringing more here, are you noticing any trends in the event industry, you know, for 2022 going forward? Yeah. <laughs> for 2022. Um, I, what, the, the big talk right now in, in the tourism industry, obviously, is recovery, um, yeah. rebuilding and recovery. The tourism and hospitality industry were just decimated. decimated. Um, I, I take a look at our business, and we lost uh, like maybe 90, almost 90 percent of our revenue. Um, and, and we're and and we're just trying to keep a pulse at this moment, right? Like we're just trying to keep stay alive, like many other event planners and event and festival and event organizers. Um, but in 2022, fingers crossed. <laughs> there's a lot of talk about just recovery and rebuilding and rebuilding and trying to get back to 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 normal, so to speak. But prior prior to the pandemic, one of the the biggest trends that was was um, taking shape was experiential tourism and that's going to continue on um, post pandemic it, it's continuing on through pandemic to an extent but we'll build back up build steam back up as we um, get past this um, which is great because as someone who who uh, builds tours but also goes on tours uh, I love experiential tourism I love the idea of being immersed in something I love um, when when a tour, you know, pulls my pulls on my senses and and gets me engaged um, in, in what it is that they're doing. 
So that definitely is going to continue on and it'll probably be one of the bigger trends um, to take shape. So that makes sense. Yeah, and we've been talking a lot about the pandemic and so you've obviously had to stay positive and hopeful. What kind of advice do you have for other entrepreneurs to kind of, you know, have that positive spirit? Um, <laughs> it's, you know what, I always try to take time, like if I'm in, I find myself in a situation where I'm trying to like, I'm starting to get in my head about something. I just have to step back sometimes and just, whether it's like I don't talk to anybody or I just have to, you know, take a few step backs, rethink about, rethink what's going on. Um, sometimes I just like, you know, head into my room and just lay, lay down and kind of refocus. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's kind of what the last couple of years has been, been <laughs> like a lot of refocusing and trying to stay uh, positive, but always constantly moving forward. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't ever really want to like go backwards. Um, I had this, this one experience where I was at a work retreat and they had us all line up in a line next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. And, and the, the individual that was leading the, the exercise would throw out uh, questions like, did your family ever take uh, summer vacations? Take one step forward. Um, has your family ever been, has your, one of your parents ever been laid off? Take a step backwards. So eventually people were at all points uh, in the line. And by the end of the exercise, I was like furthest back. <laughs> it was very traumatizing for me because I didn't under, I didn't realize that I had overcome so many hurdles and, and the, the organizers was like, it was a test. He's like, well, he knew me. So he's like, you know what? He goes, don't, it's really a testament as to how you overcome the hurdle hurdles because you're still uh, smiling, you're still positive, you're still moving forward. Um, so despite all the obstacles that you overcome, you overcame, you still made a go of it. You still, you still moved forward, um, which, is, which is a thing that I always kind of, put in my mind that no matter what happens, just keep moving forward. Yeah, no, for sure. Just, just start, just keep moving and yeah, you'll get where you're going. Um, kind of on that note, um, yeah, what do you see with startups and, you know, what advice do you have a new fat for a new founder who's just going for it? Um, Take the risk for sure. Uh, they're, they're scary, but they're worth taking. Um, I think that's part of the thrill of uh, starting a business. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people can kind of <laughs> relate. There's something like that, the vibe that you get when you're starting something new, it's scary, but exciting at the same time. Uh, but don't let the scariness stop you. Uh, don't, don't let the, the unknown kind of stop you from from going ahead with it it's always worth the risk um whether whether it works out or not or what you know i always say take the risk um i say this though but the last 20 months so prior to covid i we we were taking risks <laughs> left, <laughs> left and right the last 20 months there's a built-in hesitancy now uh, yeah, yeah. about it but still do it still doing it but there's a moment where I'm like, oh, but what, what if, um, you know, we have another lockdown, what happens? Yeah. Um, so there, while the hesitancy, the hesitancy is there, you're, you're still moving forward and you're still, you're still taking the risk. You're just adapting the idea to the potential scenarios that might happen uh, further on down the line. Yeah, for sure. And we talked about like getting the data before you do it, have, you know, you go for an idea, but like, do you have any other advice for somebody who's starting with an idea and, you know, might be wanting to work through that process? Um, definitely. I, you know, places like WeTech, um, the Small Business Center, uh, Invest Windsor Essex are invaluable. Look for mentors that are maybe they don't have to specifically be in the field that you're you're kind of looking towards. They could just be someone that you admire. Um, maybe they have a great business sense about them. Maybe you like the way they um, they they are running their company, or they're just a good human. 
<laughs> human being. Yeah. Um, look for those types of people and reach out to them um, because they can they can be an invaluable resource um, on on the entrepreneurial journey uh, for sure. We when when we started Windsor Eats and I, it was one of those things where like I mean this was like 18 years ago. Um, again, we just kind of jumped in. <laughs> and did it right it was the same with the windsor craft beer festival the windsor craft beer festival actually and i don't recommend doing this to anyone we had the idea for the beer fest kind of churning away in our minds um but in january of 2013 we were headed to we were at am 800 for um an interview about something not even not related to the beer fest because uh, yeah. we hadn't even announced it yet but we were a drama line were sitting in the lobby waiting to go on air and we thought to ourselves should we tell people that we're we we're gonna have a beer fest and we, we kind of looked at each other and we said yeah let's do it we didn't have location we didn't have <laughs> dates <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have anything um but we went on air and announced that we were having a beer fest <laughs> and uh, fire people with the idea yeah, it was, uh, again, this is like the risk thing, right? You just kind of, we just kind of went all in. And then yeah. short, immediately after that, like our phones were blowing up because first of all, we didn't have a location. Um, yeah. So, and with like 10 months, we, we decided October was the month. Uh, we didn't know what day in October, we just knew October was happening. Um, so we had like the city calling us, they're like, you're having a beer fest? <laughs> we're like, oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> this is happening. So we had to go through the, like those things, and, and, and you're probably familiar with events and that those things take like a year, yeah. um, sometimes more, um, to plan. So to announce something without, we didn't even have a, like, we didn't call anyone. We didn't, uh, we just sat in that room and looked at each other. We're like, let's have a beer fest. <laughs> yeah. And kind of doing that, do you guys like set a goal for it or do you just kind of just jump off the deep end and see what happens? Uh, there's a, <laughs> the way Adriana and I operate, there's a lot of jumping off deep ends. Um, but with, now that the beer fest, well, we missed the, the two years, but we, we tend to set um, goals for the, for those big events, right? Because obviously, or else they just wouldn't happen. Um, there's things that need to happen a year in advance um, that you need to be able to be prepared for and make sure are in place in order for that to happen. Um, so there, for, for certain aspects of the business, there are definite goals that, um, we have set that we want to kind of strive towards and make sure, um, happen and then work our way towards those things. Um, but yeah, and, and, and for next, and, and there are definite goals for next year, that's for sure. But I know with beer fest, we do have like ideas in, in our mind and, and, and all the ideas that we have doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to happen in one event, one event. Yeah. Sometimes they get phased out into over several years. Um, cause I, like I always bring up beer fest, but with beer fest, we knew the, the initial event happened on the corner of Argyle and, uh, wine dot. Yeah. Um, yeah. that was never our, um, that was not our first, first choice. Our, our goal had always been to move to Willis, Willisted Park. We knew Willisted Park was the home for Beer Fest. We wanted it to be the home for Beer Fest, um, but it was booked for weddings for two years. So yeah. we had to make adjustments for two years until we could get to that third year and get to Willisted um, and stay at Willisted. Um, so yeah, you, sometimes things don't work out the way you plan. We also, we also knew that eventually we wanted marching bands to be a part of that festival and specifically. Yeah. We didn't know how we were getting marching bands, but we knew that marching bands were an ultimate goal for Beer Fest. Um, so eventually we met the Detroit Party Marching Band, which was our first um, our first marching band to participate in the festival. And then they invited their friends and then it became a night of marching bands. Yeah. Which if you I love marching bands. Um, so it was like a dream come true for me. Well, that's exciting. And probably with all of that, getting those restaurants, getting the, you know, the breweries out there, getting the marching bands, you probably have to network like a heck of a lot. Do you have any tips for new entrepreneurs in networking and all of that? Yeah, talk to everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, a, a great thing to do as well is like follow up. Um, 
always making sure like when you do connect with someone, just follow up with them after. Um, like I said, Windsor Essex is a small community. You are always going to run into someone that you know or that you've met or that um, someone that you've met now, you might not be able to connect with them on a professional level at that moment. But yeah. it could be years down the line where all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I remember so-and-so, they did this. Let me go back um, and connect with them. So just because you don't have something in common with someone on at, at first go when you first meet them doesn't mean that further on down the line um, you not they might not be able to help you out or vice versa you might you might be able to help them out yeah no for sure um, that definitely makes a lot of sense I think we're at the point where we have to do the Q and A's so we'll open those up soon um, but before we do that do you have any like parting advice any last things you want to say uh, no I think this was great. No, I think we had a really good talk. Um, so yeah, guys, we'll open up the QA. Let's get to it. Also, Jean Marc, uh, a night of marching bands. I don't know if you've ever been to it. It's amazing. They don't have a stage. They're in the crowd, and it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no Q and A's quite yet. Yeah. Wait, I think I. Oh, someone's saying similar to your public beer fest announcement any crazy way to uh any crazy way too early new event that you want to announce right now <laughs> um no i don't no, think we're, we're, we're our goal for 2022 is just to like like recover and rebuild we're gonna go back to um we're gonna re look take a look at all our events that we did have and kind of either reimagine them or um, kind of tweak them in a way that uh, works for um, the new environment that we're in. Well, that makes sense. Is there like one event that you would like you're really excited to bring back more than any others? No, that marching band night is like my fave. Beer Fest is, of all our events, Beer Fest for me is everything that I've, I want in an event. <laughs> It's one of those things where, like, I've been to events in a lot of different cities. One in speci one specifically was an event in Ireland. My sister lives in Ireland, so I get to visit her quite often. Mm -hmm. And we took we took in a food and literary festival at um, a place called Ballymaloo. It was yeah. everything I ever wanted in a festival. It was so amazing. Um, and it's, it's become, every time we, we build an idea for a festival, we go back to that festival. I go back to that festival. They don't do it anymore, unfortunately, but I, that is like peak festival for me. <laughs> yeah. It was just so, there was so much attention to detail. Um, and it was, when, when you talk about an experience, it was an experience. It, it, it integrated so many different emotions, um, and senses that it's ultimately uh, everything that we try to achieve when we when we build a festival. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got some questions now. So here's a really good one. What advice do you have to upcoming entrepreneurs in managing, managing the side, you know, hustle and having that full-time position? Because I'm sure that's a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm sure a lot of people can tell you it's uh, not easy. There's not enough time in a day to kind of do it all and you kind of have to accept that. So you have to manage your time in, in, in kind of like increments, right? So I, I have like an 8.30 to 4.30 day job. Yeah. So then when I come home, I basically, bedtime for my daughter is like 8.30. So I have like three and a half hours to get bed, bath, uh, dinner, homework, all that kind of squeezed in there. Um, and in between that, catch up on things that um, I've missed during the day. Uh, so I, you know, you, you know, emails, um, thank God for phones though. Like you can constantly check email during the day, but just catching up on stuff during the evenings lists are like huge for me. I have to have lists, whether they're online lists, paper lit, like I constantly have like a book, um, uh, pen and paper. I like I'm old school that way. Um, yeah. but Go Google is also like Google owns me. Um, <laughs> everything is on Google shared calendars. Like it's like, all in the drive. Uh, organized chaos. 
Awesome. It's all in the drive. It's all, I always tell, like, uh, we have a family calendar. We have, like, a, my, my Windsor Eats calendar, work calendar. It's all in the calendar. <laughs> no, definitely keep as organized as you can to do it. Um, do, do, do. We've talked a lot about, you know, having that just jump off the deep end, but kind of also contrasting that with the hes hesitancy of, you know, pandemic life. What do you tell yourself to get through all of that? And, you know, to just actually go out and do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a constant, um, especially the last two years, because I'm I finding, um, because things have been so weird, you, you, find, you find yourself getting into this slump because it's not, normally in, in a normal year for us, it's go, 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 go. It's, yeah. it's a constant whirlwind of activity. But the last two years, there's been a pause. Um, and not, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like I find myself, okay, this is how extreme I get sometimes. <laughs> so because we don't have our own events, I've been creating events for my daughter. For her. <laughs> um, so I've been doing like picnic in the park and her birthdays are like theatrical kind of, nobody should do this really. Um, and I, I keep apologizing to the moms. I'm like, I'm not trying to set a bar here. I'm just trying to fill a void of event planning. <laughs> creative energy out there we did a whole greatest showman outdoor movie theater thing in the backyard it was it was extreme i don't recommend it it was fun but i learned the dance it was like the whole thing yeah it was ridiculous no, but that's, that's me me trying to fill a void where i'm not doing events and i have like a all this free time now and and i'm trying to fill fill it with things to do <laughs> yeah no that sounds awesome no so like kind of on that topic what do you think makes a great event um, I, I, you have to, I, for me, it's about making it authentic. It's about pulling in the senses. It's about, it's when I think back at that Valley Malou festival, it had everything. It had these pers like little stations along the way. It was on a farm field. Um, yeah. they had events in barns. They had, um, like high profile people that were speaking, but then those high profile people were also part of the crowd. So I could go up and talk to, and this is like, if you don't know these people, it means nothing to you. <laughs> like um, go up and talk to Renee Red Zeppi or Yodamoto Lengi, or um, they were in the crowd, like um, as part of the event. But it was, it was so personal um, that it made it an exceptional experience. Um, and then there were takeaways like, you know, they had tasting booths, they had free sessions on, on how to build a barrel or, or, you know, things like that. It was, it was above and beyond anything that I kind of ever, ever wanted. Oh, that, that sounds awesome. Um, this viewer asked, you know, what resources have you found to be helpful here in Windsor, Essex while building your business? And I think that's a great question. Um, um people, people are great resources. There are people in this town that are just like, so amazing uh, and and some of the ones that come up are chris uzinski who who ran the marathons in town he's just a wealth of information and expertise in the field of events yeah, um, yeah. chris ryan also an invaluable resource and a person that is you just want to get to know him um he also has a wealth of information and experience um people like that it's there, and 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 just like in organizations, we, we tech we we fall back on we tech a lot. We're always you know uh, trying to keep engaged with them because again they're also an invaluable resource to have. The small business center. If you have questions about um, anything small business related, uh, they have people there that are more than knowledgeable um, to help you out. Um, but I always fall back on people. If I have a question, um, like this past week, we were, we were looking at, uh, we had an idea running in our minds and I'm like, let's call so-and-so, so-and-so, and so, -and -so, and -so, -and -so. <laughs> uh, I fall back on people because it's, it's their advice. I value their advice and I value their experiences, um, more than anything else. Oh, for sure. That makes a lot of sense. People are so important getting other opinions on it. Um, Kind of on that note, we were talking about having ideas bouncing around. What's one event you'd like to bring to Windsor, Essex? Like something you haven't done, but would be like a signature event. That food and literary festival. That thing yeah. was so amazing. It was done by um, 
like they don't, again, they don't do it anymore because they felt their vision wasn't, they, their vision had changed and they, they felt the food and literary festival um, wasn't going to be what they wanted it to be. Yeah. But basically it was, um, they brought in um, authors um, and chefs and food, um, I don't want to say foodies, but culinary experts uh, from around Ireland and Europe to mm -hmm. have uh you have so the the event was free yeah it was yeah. on uh Dorina, her name is Dorina Allen she's I, I liken her to like the Julia Child of Ireland she's infamous there yeah. um and it was on her farm so she was walking around you could talk to her she was lovely lovely woman uh but she brought in um you know Jamie Oliver um David Le Levowitz um Renee Redzepi, you know, Otolenghi, um, all these people that were experts in their field to huh. do these sessions and seminars. And they happened over a three, two to three day span on the farm. And you can sign up for whatever individual session that you wanted. But the general festival was free. You could walk around the grounds of this, of this amazing organic farm um, and just participate in other activities. They had, the barn was like filled with food vendors, um, organic food vendors, Irish food vendors from across the country. Um, and you could, it was just, it was amazing. I can't, I wish, no, we, could have, I wish we could have that here. That'd be exciting. I mean, we've got the perfect city for, it. I mean, we've got all the food and we've got the literary element with, you know, Bibli Oasis and all of them. It's definitely something yeah. we could have here. Yeah, they had like, I mean, you could go on an oyster shucking field trip because they were by the, the sea. You could, um, we, we did a, a, a walk through the garden because she has this a ma massive organic gar wildflower garden. So uh, went through with um, a whiskey es expert and a cocktail expert picking wildflowers and then making a cordial with them and then drinking, having a drink in the garden. It was just, there was so many aspects of it that it was just like, oh, it was amazing. I'd love to see that here. It'd, yeah, it'd be great. Sure. Um, kind of on that note, like what's your personal favorite Windsor Eats event we've done or you've done so far? Um, so beer fest for sure, but while the, the urban wine fest, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to say that because in that last week when we changed everything, because before we changed it, it was just like a run of the mill event. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, it had its booths and it had, you know, its vendors at its booths and stuff like that. And it, it just wasn't resonating with me. But then when we changed it and we changed the format of it and we changed the booth, instead of having a vendor, we changed it to like the Chardonnay booth, the Pinot Grigio booth. Because to be honest with you, if you were coming to an event, um, I'm not looking for specific vendors when it comes to wine because I might not know them, but I know that I like Pinot Grigio. So I'm going to head to the Pinot Grigio booth. And then under that booth, we had multiple vendors. Like yeah. We had multiple uh, types of wine and they weren't, there were locals, but there was also uh, international wines because we're always saying how great our wine is. And I feel like let's showcase them uh, next to international wines because they can hold their own. Yeah. Um, so we did it that way. And in, and we, we kind of um, coordinated the event so that all the signage was the same, not the same, like it was, it was very colorful, but it, it had a consistent look to it. And yeah. I love that. And I mm -hmm. thought that was great. And then at the end of it, when I stepped back and took a look at it, I loved the way it looked. It yeah. looked amazing. Um, so a lot of ideas from that specific festival that I hope we can kind of in, in, yeah, implement in others. Oh, well, that's exciting. And we have one last question from the viewers. Um, how do you foresee the event industry changing post pandemic? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's going to be a while before we see any type of normalcy. I think when we first started this thing, Adriana and I were gauging like three, four years before some level of normalcy kind of comes in. But for the foreseeable future, for 2022, what I think is going to happen, because I, I, Art in the Park just announced that they're going to hold Art in the Park in 2022. Yeah. So I think that's going to be our first major event that's going to happen. Um, yeah. They kind of always kick off the summer. Um, so I think what's going to happen is you're still going to see um, distancing. You're still you're going to see like, like heightened levels of sanitations, you know, happening. Um, 
And I think that's going to stick around for like probably a couple of years. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's really until we get past that, that we can go back to like being in a crowded space. I don't know if anybody wants to be in a crowded space anymore, but <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's not quite the carefree environment right now. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there. Someone was telling me that it's going to take, um, like we're currently in a pandemic but, uh, that'll last a few years. Then we'll enter into a post pandemic phase and they anticipated that being five years. Yeah. I, I almost cried, but it's, you know, it's, it's the reality of things. Um, yeah, but I, I think with, with our first, with our event in October with beer fest, we'll definitely see like probably still see like distancing measures in place and, uh, possibly the passport thing hopefully not um okay. hopefully that kind of fades by the wayside oh that definitely makes sense yeah no i think that's that's it for us i mean that was an awesome chat it was great to talk to you today that was an hour i know it was really fast <laughs> um but no it was amazing it was great to talk to you so um yeah thank you for that and i'll open the floor up to lay and so she can do her final remarks Thank you so much. Thank you, Pina and Harley, for sharing your knowledge and insight with us today. That was a fantastic chat. Pina, I do want to say that our academic career path or our academic paths mirrored each other because I did journalism and then communications too. Did so. you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so on behalf of Founders Week YQG, we can't wait to celebrate your continued growth and success. We have a quick survey for all of our attendees today. It is in the chat box right now. Uh, please click on the link in the chat box to provide feedback for this session. This will enter you into a session giveaway to win a $50 Windsor card. The more sessions you provide feedback for, the more entries you have in the final draw. Before we close the event, I'm just going to take a quick screenshot. So I'll warn you guys before I do it. So three, two, one, say cheese. <laughs> um, perfect. That's always awkward. I apologize. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't forget to check out our schedule for upcoming events. Next up, we have a paint night with Julie's paint party at 6.30 p.m. Also, we just want to ensure that you don't miss our Founders Week YQG Town Hall and Failure Night. Make sure you add them to your schedule so you don't miss out. So again, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us and sharing your time with us. And I found this conversation, first of all, yes to the literary festival. Yes, right? And we need it. Festival. Let's do literary and wine together. And yes. <laughs> I'm in. All right. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Awesome. Bye. Cheers. Have a good one.